This video describes how to cross <clears throat> a wire resistant subclavian obstruction uh, in the setting of chronic fibrosis related to the old leads. And uh, this is a vascular situation that is completely unique uh, to the the EP doctor or when you're dealing with this sort of situation. So none of the typical rules and regulations or what works and what doesn't work uh, in the atherosclerotic vascular world uh, works here. So you have this occlusion um, and uh, when you work with a wire alone it doesn't go anywhere. So here's where you, where you bring in um, a small catheter to assist in crossing the occlusion. And it's very important the type of catheter that you use. And uh, the one that we're using here is this braided angled hydrophilic catheter um, that gives you control of the tip. A similar catheter uh, made by another company doesn't have that uh, same torque control. It's not braided and you can see it's just this wobbly plastic tube. And so what we do is we connect the uh, braided catheter uh, with the tip, angled tip, uh, to an injection system and we'll use that very much like you might use a glide wire to try to cross the occlusion. So you use it in combination with a glide wire but not exclusively with the glide wire. So for example here we're manipulating the catheter and pushing it uh, at the lesion and we're going to, uh, without a wire, uh, we're going to try to advance this catheter um, through the occlusion and you can see we're working it here and working it and it slides along uh, the leads um, and there's a couple of points. One is that the angle and length of this is very important and in this particular situation we're using what's called a KA2 from Merit um, and the length of the tip having tried different lengths is very important so this the length on the KA2 is just perfect for this situation um, and it's also hydrophilic so the outside of this catheter is slippery very much like a glide wire so we're, we get it to this point and then advance a standard glide wire as far as it will go and so you're sort of working the two together um, but always recognizing that this is heavy fibrous tissue and not atherosclerotic vascular disease and so there's really no fear that you're going to put a hole in the vein uh, while you're doing this and so here you can see we have the wire all the way to here and we're trying to advance the KA2 catheter over the wire so that we can then advance the wire further. And if you watch, you'll see that the catheter slides forward. Now that wouldn't have been possible if this catheter uh, was a standard catheter. Remember I mentioned that it has a hydrophilic coating. That's very important. Makes it slippery so that it'll, so that it'll move along. So then we get to here and we advance an O3 5 glide wire and uh, it won't go all the way out. So we then move to an 018 angled glide wire or you might use a V18 control wire and you can see that the wire has now gone um, up off and up into the uh, right subclavian and so we kept pushing the wire and to be sure that we were actually in the central circulation we followed it down and we can see now that the wire is truly uh, in the right ventricle. So we then uh, follow the KA2 catheter, follow the, the wire, uh, withdraw the wire, and then re-advance the wire uh, down into the central circulation, and then follow <clears throat> the KA2 catheter over the wire. Um, and then from here, we put two V18 control wires, take the glide wire out, and we put two V18 control wires in because they're stiffer uh, than the glide wire. And then we're going to use those two, one of those two wires uh, to pre-dilate and the other to serve as a focus force venoplasty wire. And we'll go over 
the details of venoplasty uh, later on. But you can see we're now removing the Ka2 catheter and now we're starting our predilatation. So we'll stop at this point because the video is getting sort of long um, and that's where we stand.